Good evening and welcome to this edition of The List on UWW-TV. I'm Matt Ellis alongside Nolan Kopodlowski. For the next few minutes, we'll present our top five sports stories of the week and discuss why they made the top five. Do your top five make our list? Let's find out. At our number five spot, tragic news struck across the NFL community Saturday morning. Ohio State standout and Pittsburgh Steelers star quarterback Dwayne Haskins unexpectedly passed away after being struck by a car. Haskins would have been 25 years old on May 3rd, and prayers go out to him and his family and his friends. Dwayne Haskins only spent one season as Ohio State's starting quarterback, but did plenty to leave behind a legacy. Looking back at his career, what moments stand out to you? Well, obviously, uh, it was very tragic to hear the uh, Dwayne Haskins news, especially um, being so young. You know, um, in that draft that he was in, uh, he was obviously one of the uh, um, one of the highest quarterbacks taken. I think he was taken 15th overall by Washington then. Um, so it was really just devastating news to hear. Um, but talk about a legacy he left behind. Um, even though he didn't have the best NFL career, I mean, his college legacy was nearly unmatched. He has Big Ten records. Um, you know, he had 499 yards, five touchdowns in the 2018 Big Ten Conference Championship. He won another conference championship after that. Um, he won a Rose Bowl in his career there. So, I mean, there's really nothing you can say that he didn't do um, in Ohio State. He was a fantastic Ohio State quarterback, and uh, it was really tragic to hear the news, um, and he will be greatly missed for sure. At our number four sports story of the week, the Los Angeles Lakers have fired coach Frank Vogel. The Lakers finished the season with a disappointing 33-49 record, well below expectations after the team came into the year with the title aspirations following the acquisition of Russell Westbrook over the offseason. The Lakers failed to make even the play-in tournament and missed the playoffs entirely two seasons after winning the 2020 NBA championship and Vogel's first season that culminated in the Orlando bubble. What's next for the Lakers? Uh, what coaching placements would work best for them? And Matt, how much blame do you put on Coach Vogel for the Lakers' disappointing seasons? Well, look, Vogel probably did the best job that he could giving LA circumstances over the past four or so years. Now, Vogel did win a championship over in the bubble in 2020, so Vogel did a good job with this team. I mean, he got a championship for them, but I think as you know, being the coach of the Lakers is just a lot of responsibility is gonna fall on you. And unfortunately for Vogel, he got a little bit more uh, disrespect than he deserved in this situation. As for the Lakers next coach, I mean, they could certainly go out and steal a top guy, maybe like Quinn Snyder or Nick Nurse. But that's gonna be very difficult, especially for the Jazz or Raptors to give up those kind of guys. I think what the Lakers got to do is just kind of bring in more of a player's coach and let LeBron lead things. Uh, and then they just got to focus on their roster construction, try to maybe move off Russell Westbrook if you can. It's going to be tough to move off a guy like Westbrook, but they did it with Vogel, so they have to do it with Westbrook as well. At our number three spot, Scotty Scheffler has won the 2022 Masters on Sunday following a dominant performance at Augusta National. Scheffler ended up finishing three shots over Rory McIlroy to win his first major championship. He's the fourth rookie to win the golf tournament on his first attempt. Meanwhile, five times master championship, Tiger Woods finished in the 47th spot, making this his worst finish as a professional. The tournament marked Woods' return to high stakes golf after 14 months after a horrific car accident. What do you think of the dominating performance of Scotty Scheffler and how he put it on? And what do you think of Tiger's injury and how it affected his performance? Well, look, let's start with Tiger Woods. Um, I think Tiger Woods, this was a major accomplishment for him, uh, him to even be there and competing um, in this Masters tournament. I mean, after that car accident he had, I thought for sure he was going to be done given his age and obviously given his past history. I mean, this is, he had been in a car accident before, but, um, you know, the fact that he was even out there, I didn't really expect him to win, um, but the fact that he was able to finish the tournament and uh, is back to um, competing in uh, pro tours, that's, that's a big step for him. And as for Scotty Scheffler, talk about a guy on a hot streak. I mean, on February 13th, this guy hadn't won a single PGA event. Then he wins three straight, becomes the number one in the world. Um, he's able to win the Masters. I mean, he, he, is, he has it all right now, and he uh, could obviously um, you know, start, to, uh, start to make a dent and um, put himself in that GOAT conversation if he keeps this up at this rate. He's only 25 years old. We have our first round playoff predictions coming up on the list. We'll be right back.
Welcome to Jitters Coffee House. Located on the first floor of the Wells Towers, Jitters is a student-run coffee lounge and offers a variety of coffee and ice cream-based drinks and is home to many entertaining programs, including live music, gamer trivia nights, and other performances. Coordinate your activity by emailing jitters at uww.edu. Jitters is completely run by volunteers who can earn service hours and even receive a free drink during their shift. Stop in tonight at Jitters Coffee House, where fun events and community come together. Welcome to the University Bookstore. The University Bookstore provides students with the opportunity to purchase apparel, gift items, textbooks, snacks, supplies, and other necessities right here on campus. The bookstore is also home to textbook rental, where you can find many of your required textbooks. Our friendly staff always goes the extra mile to provide customers with a quick and pleasant experience. Visit the bookstore today to find great deals on everything you need to succeed as a Warhawk. The UC can get you connected to all your basic needs. Grab a coffee and a meal. Study by the fireplace. Bowl, play, and relax when you want a break from homework. The UC has much more to offer to Whitewater students. Go to the UC's website to see what's going on this week. Welcome back to The List on UWW-TV. Let's continue the countdown to this week's top two sports stories. At our number two spot, the Milwaukee Brewers and Chicago Cubs were able to play three of the four games scheduled for the opening weekend of 2022. The long-anticipated opening series did not go exactly the way the Brewers wanted as they won just one game out of the three played. The Cubs took the first two games with scores of 5-4 and 9-0. The Brewers took the, ser the series finale by a score of 5-4. Though it is still very early in the season, there are some things Milwaukee can take away from this series. What are some things the Brewers must work on to be successful going forward, Matt? Well, I think, you know, for the first part, this is going to kind of be how the Brewers' offense will be throughout the season. It's going to be a lot of times where maybe they don't perform up to the standard that they thought they would. Now, they kind of had guys getting it going, such as, uh, you know, Andrew McCutcheon being a guy that they brought in free agency. So just for the Brewers, it's going to be more about just getting, you know, contact and runners on base. And that way, some of your bigger guys, like maybe Willie Adamas, can kind of put those guys on the board, score some runs with the home run. Now, as for the Cubs in this kind of series, it proved a good amount for them. I think it proved that they're just going to be a competitive team and they can beat some teams like the Brewers, you know, if they got the offense going. And the one bright spot for the Cubs being Saya Suzuki, I mean, over from Japan, brought him in free agency. And he's looked pretty good for the Cubs. He's hit a couple of home runs so far in his first couple of games. Um, but getting back to the Brewers, look, you're going to have to need guys like Christian Yelich to kind of return to at least, uh, you know, a very respectable starter over there in left field, and then maybe the Brewers could have a chance to really make a deep run in the postseason, but as for now, the Brewers will still be fine just as the season is starting to get going, and they'll kind of wrap things up and start to look in their first place finish. Our number one sports story of the week, the 2021 NBA regular season has come to an end, and there was plenty of positioning still to be determined on the final day. The playing tournament begins on Tuesday, and the first round games begin on Saturday. The Suns and Grizzlies will enter the Western Conference bracket as the top two seeds, but the Warriors could make some noise if they have their full roster available. In the Eastern Conference, the Heat, Celtics, Bucks, and Sixers will all be making to look a deep postseason run. Now that the playoff matchups are locked in, what are first round matchups you'll be watching closely and how do you think the tournament will play out? Well, to start with the playing games, um, I, I think that the, uh, the Nets will take down the Cavs. I think the Cavs are too banged up. Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if the Cavs missed the playoffs entirely. 
Um, for the Western Conference, I think the Clippers are somebody to really watch out for in the play-in tournament. And uh, then between the Spurs and the Pelicans, I think that that doesn't really matter. Whoever wins that um, or whoever wins that game and face the loser of the Minnesota Clippers game, you know, they'll just lose to uh, the Suns. But uh, overall, um, first round Eastern Conference matchup I'm really looking forward to is the 76ers versus the Raptors. I think that one could go either way. Um, and I think that Doc Rivers' job could definitely be in danger uh, if the Sixers go down to the Raptors. But I wouldn't count the Raptors out. They have one of the best coaches in the NBA in Nick Nurse, and uh, they should definitely, um, they're definitely a team to, uh, not to be trifled with. Um, looking into the Western Conference, you know, I think the Jazz Mavs series is another one to really look at, uh, especially with Luka Doncic now being injured. Um, you know, when will he come back and how much of an impact will that have in that series? You know, that's, that remains to be seen, but I think that those four or five series in both conferences will prove to be the best ones of the first round. To me, it just kind of seems like we're headed for a Bucks and Suns finals rematch, uh, but that's just kind of how things are in the NBA with the Suns looking so good and the Bucks also getting back to their championship role and kind of being the good team that we know that the Bucks can be. And that will do it for this edition of The List. We'll be back next week on UWW-TV to talk more about the sports headlines. For Nolan Kopidlowski, I'm Matt Ellis. See you next week.